I thought I'd just give you kind of brief presentation of general approach uh, that we have uh, or we take with neuropathy patients. So um, when, we, when we see patient, just the first thing that we, of course, uh, look at uh, the clinical picture, but that is backed by no conduction studies. And it, it helps us to kind of make a very important decision as to which direction we heading to. Now, what I normally divide neuropathies into two categories, as we all uh, know, uh, exonal categories de and demalnating neuropathies. And, and then again, both exonal and demalnating neuropathies can be subdivided into two or, uh, other categories called acquired and inherited. And if you look at um, the bottom is history and examination. And so most of the time, if you if you take a proper history, I think you get a bit of decent ideas to which kind of uh, um, which what type of neuropathy you kind of dealing with. And um, most of the time, if you have a symmetrical presentation uh, and 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 very distal presentation, then you probably likely to deal with some sort of exonal neuropathy as well. All acquired demalting neuropathies, they more likely to have proximal weakness um, uh, in, to start with. So, you know, when you're taking history, uh, I think uh, you can get decent ideas to what's happening in terms of whether you're dealing with uh, demalting neuropathies or exonal neuropathies. Now, some demalting neuropathies, for example, uh, DADS or anti mag neuropathies, they have. Uh, distal uh, predominance symptoms in terms of tremor and uh, uh, ataxia uh, when they walk. So they, these patients will present with balance problem and tremor. So you kind of get a bit of decent understanding as to what's going on in terms of uh, clinically. And then you use tests like no conduction studies, CSF, blood test to kind of back your findings up and come to some sort of logical differential diagnosis and then that will also help you to guide the treatment aspect so again history is key um, you and followed by other tests that we do in clinical practice now exonal neuropathies are very straightforward most of the time because they have got a slowly progressive uh, course um, they have underlying history of diabetes, so you pretty much know that you're dealing with uh, length-dependent exonal neuropathy related to diabetes. There are very few exonal neuropathies that you will kind of worry about, like asymmetrical presentation, painful uh, asymmetrical exonal neuropathy. You think about multi uh, mononeuritis multiplex. So um, those are kind of straightforward presentation, but for demyelinating de neuropathies, where everyone gets a bit excited about and then say, right, uh, what are we dealing with? Uh, I mean, how, how to deal with demyelinating neuropathies? So general approach is to, you kind of look at, uh, so you do, you've seen a patient in clinic and they have, for example, proximal weakness and some sensory findings, sensory symptoms and uh, absent reflexes. And if you have a young patient always, and, and then you've done now conduction studies and, and the neurophysiology report uh, says that this patient has got demonitoring neuropathy in there. The next thing you need to look at is the, what age group you're dealing with. If you've got a young, a young chap or young patient, then you think about CMT, demonitoring neuropathy neuropathies and these people have very symmetrical conduction slowing on the no conduction studies on they don't tend to have many conduction block unless you're dealing with hnpp like uh, hereditary neuropathy or pressure palsy type of presentation and then you look at the phenotype and if they have a symmetrical presentation you more likely to deal um, likely to be dealing with uh, um uh, CIDP, but asymmetrical presentation, um, um, asymmetrical demanding neuropathy, most likely to be MMN or medicine type of things. The tempo of illness is very important. So most of the time, if you have subacute onset, you may be dealing with ACIDP, acute CIDP. And if they have got distal predominance, um, then 
you're more likely to dealing, be dealing with anti-mag neuropathy as opposed to C typical CIDP, which the, in those patients, you're more likely to get proximal presentation. And if you got CSF uh, uh, protein, which is raised, then you're more likely to deal with uh, CIDP or could be in CMT cases. Any demanding neuropathy, if you if you if if you're allowed to do one test, a blood test, then I always check paraproteins because um, always perform serum electroporosis and serum free light chains because I think that will help you to to figure out in terms of whether you're dealing with uh, lymphoproliferative um, condition or not.